The name Mongolia simply means the land of the Mongols in Latin, as we can see in the country's name Mongol and that ever-present ear suffix we see in many country names. So if Mongolia is named after the Mongols, then how did the Mongols get their name? Well, this name seems to be something of a mystery, but one source tells me that it may come from the Mongolian Mong, which means brave. I mean, I could see a group of people calling themselves brave. Now, this is all well and good, and if I ask you to point to Mongolia on the map, then pointing around here would be perfect, as that is where the country of Mongolia resides. However, if you pointed lower down in the northern part of China, despite pointing at China, you are still pointing at Mongolia. Well, kind of, as this region of China is also called Mongolia, Inner Mongolia to be precise. So how on earth did we end up with a separate country and a part of China that are both called Mongolia? I guess we should try to figure out what exactly Inner Mongolia is. Like I said, Inner Mongolia is a region of China. It's the northernmost region of China and not only does it border Mongolia the country, but it continues northwards in a crescent shape and even borders Russia too. However, despite being a part of China, it is an autonomous region. This means that even though it is a part of China, it still has its own local government and a larger diversity of ethnic groups living within, primarily Chinese nationals with Mongolian people too. If there's an Inner Mongolia, does that mean there's an Outer Mongolia too? Well, there was an Outer Mongolia, and there still sort of is. The country of just Mongolia at one point in history was known as Outer Mongolia, and to some people in China it is still referred to as Outer Mongolia and even North Mongolia to differentiate it from their Inner Mongolia in China. So why is there an Inner and Outer Mongolia anyway, and why is the Inner Mongolia in China? Well, it all comes down to us claim the land over the years. Of course, one of the most famous Mongols to ever grace the earth is Genghis Khan, and it was his Mongol Empire that took over so much of the land in Asia. In fact, at its peak, the Mongol Empire was the second largest empire we've ever seen on planet Earth, just behind yours truly. Of course, part of this huge empire included the land that covers modern day China. However, with foresight on our side, we know that this didn't last forever. Once the Mongol Empire fell and the Chinese Qin Dynasty took over, all of Mongolia, inner and outer, became a part of this Chinese empire. And it remained this way for many years until the fall of the Qing Dynasty, becoming independent in 1921. However, it came a time when Russia wished to have more land because you know they don't have enough as it is and it was in 1924 the Red Army established the Mongolian's People Republic in Outer Mongolia. Inner Mongolia was fought over between the Russians, Mongols, Chinese and even the Japanese. However when the People's Republic of China was formed it was cemented as a part of China. The Outer Mongolia that was claimed by the Russians helped as a buffer area between China and Russia. However for some time China still saw Outer Mongolia as their land. Despite this Russian Mongolia being formed in 1924 it was only in 1946 China recognised its independence. It was in 1992 with the collapse of the Soviet Union that the Mongolian People's Republic became just Mongolia. So that is why we have an Inner Mongolia in China and an Outer Mongolia in, well, Mongolia. But why is the Chinese Mongolia the Inner Mongolia? I'm guessing it's due to the fact that during the Mongol Empire, Inner Mongolia would have been the more central and, well, inner part of Mongolia, with that name simply sticking around. Like I said though, this is just my own theorising. So how similar are these two Mongolias now? They were once part of the same empires but now stand at two separate places and that's exactly the answer to this. They're separate places. Different governments, different currencies, different passports. However, there are some similarities. Languages of each country can be found in each other as well as natives of each country living within each other country. And of course, the biggest similarity is their names. Names that to me are relics of empires that have risen and fallen in these lands. Mongolia was suggested by Elizabeth Westner on Patreon and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as Name Explains Patron Saint of Mongolia. If you want to become a Name Explained Patron Saint, then why not support the channel on Patreon? Just a dollar and up earns you the chance to suggest a country or geographical location on the Wednesday Patron Saint Suggestions post for the next Patron Saint video. Name Explained depends on awesome people like yourself giving small monthly donations to the channel, so thank you to my patrons. These Tuesday videos are able to exist solely because of all the awesome people who support Name Explained financially on Patreon. If you enjoy these videos and want to be a greater part of our Name Explained community, then why not support the channel? Just $2 a month gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you.